Uh, I am Suman Rajal. I am coming from Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative, India Office, based at New Delhi. IDA, as you would understand, is a combination of three drugs that is being rolled out as a preventive chemotherapy for lymphatic filariasis control program. Now, previously it used to be two drugs, namely albendazole and dihydrocarbamazepine in India, but now they have added ivermectin. The advantage of adding a, this third drug has been that it has decreased the time of duration for administering this mass drug administration from five to six years to bring it down to two to three years. Another benefit is that it is also uh, having an effect on the adult worm. Just try to explain that a bit more. Uh, in, the, in the dual therapy, you were having uh, most of the effect is on the microfilaria, so you are preventing transmission. Here you are also uh, having an effect on the adult worm, which would in, in, in fact, essentially hypothetically, it should also benefit from people going on to develop uh, you know, the severe morbidity in the, in the, in the, in the, in the in future from the filariasis infection. Now, with regards to the second part of the question, uh, as lymph, similar to uh, lymphatic uh, filariasis, Kalazar is also a vector-borne disease which affects a similar geographical area, namely PR, UP, West Bengal, and Jharkhand, which affects the poorest of the poor in similar situations. And there also, uh, there is an elimination campaign going on, and there we have seen the benefits of having a single drug treatment with liposomal amitricin B a single dose of 10 milligrams, which has caused cure of more than 90% of the patients. And what we have seen is the impact with this and with other combination uh, in the control studies has been the case numbers have come down from 70,000 about a decade ago to now only four to 5,000 cases here in, in India. And similar, it has been seen in Bangladesh and Nepal. This is one of the, I, I, if I would consider the, the my biggest priority would, would be how do you improve the coverage and compliance of mass drug administration of IDA? If you note that, if you are able to have a coverage of more than 75% or more, you can achieve elimination in two years. If it is come down to 65%, you need three years. And if you come down further down, you will require more number of years. Now, if you look at it from a cost effective wise, they, I don't think anybody has looked at it so, so you know, closely. But definitely there would be a cost effective benefit by improving the coverage, putting resources to improving the coverage so as to get the benefit of having a wider coverage of this mass drug administration of ITA. So as I mentioned uh, in earlier that the strategy should be to increase maximum coverage, but then how do we do that? And one of the key ways is community mobilization and awareness because from a perspective of a common man, he needs to understand why he needs to take the drug. Because for example, he thinks that he doesn't have lymphatic filariasis, so there may be no need for him to take the drug. And then they all, there are also implications, because it does have, to some, to, for some people, a few side effects. And, and this needs to be well explained. And so here, the, the planning and preparation, depending on the place where you're administrating it, and especially training and building capacity of the drug administrators is crucial to getting a you know, buy-in from the community to take the drug. So I would say that social mobilization, including IEC activities and awareness, and as this is a, a national program which is having a huge impact, a people's type movement type of effort should be created uh, to, to have a successful campaign. Yes, Drugs for Neglected Disease Initiative, in fact, was established to take care of the market failure for developing innovative treatments for these type of neglected diseases. And we did start with some of the most neglected diseases like Kalazar, for example, in India, and sleeping sickness in, in Africa, and Chagas disease. So here, uh, because the treatments were either very toxic or it was having uh, not available, we wanted to develop something which could be used at a level where the patients are accessing treatment. With specific reference to lymphatic filariasis, we did have a program on filariasis for developing new 
drugs for macrophilicidal effect that's treating the adult worms. But however, with the success that has been shown with the triple duct therapy, we have suspended the development of a, for the LF. However, uh, there is another filariasis which affects, uh, you know, in Africa called onchocerciasis. We are continuing the drug development and currently we have several of the compounds, new compounds in the phase one studies. And eventually, if we are successful, when we are successful in developing these drugs, and if there is a need for having supplemental therapy for the mass drug administration, this could also be considered for lymphatic filariasis.